Great grandmother gets a second chance at freedom after President Trump commutes her life sentence. All right, y'all. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you're tuning in. I'm grateful to have you here. And we got racist Donald Trump and Larry Elder back in the building. Oh, boy, I'm sure this will be a doozy. Let's get it popping. It is beyond dispute, right? Water is wet, sky is blue. Donald Trump is a card-carrying, bona fide racist, right? The president of the United States is a racist. False. His own words leave absolutely no doubt about that. What he is saying is not racially charged. It is flat out racist. And this, of course, makes his supporters racist. We never took Don Lemonhead serious, did we? He, I mean, he's married to a man. That just shows you how his, his moral views and, and beliefs line up. It just ain't right. <laughs> but for people who look like me, other minorities, women who have been, well, let's just leave this to race. This president has said and done so many insensitive and bigoted and racist things that if you support for him, you, if you support him, people like me want to understand why you ignored so much. You know, to just be grossly oh my goodness. journalistic. Now we got Hillary. <laughs> you could put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. <laughs> really? Right? And that ain't the racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic, you name it. But, 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 Murderer, black unemployment, <laughs> historical lows. I think the economy is doing absolutely great, and it's particularly reaching into populations that heretofore have had very bad problems in terms of jobs, employment, and the opportunities that come with full employment. So African American unemployment is at its lowest level. I give uh, Say it again, President for the Trump, in the back. I said this before on Squawk Box, I give President a lot of credit for moving the economy in a positive direction that's benefiting a, a, a large number of Americans. Yeah, but he's still a racist. The problem here is that the president has unfortunately used language in the past uh, that will, we will have a lot of difficulty in, in erasing, uh, even with uh, an eraser, uh, with the, the words uh, 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 unemployment drop. Uh, because I, I think some harsh and painful words are, are just kind of hanging out here uh, across the country uh, as it relates to African-Americans and some but other minorities. Think, and what about the First Step Act? Do these people not realize that we have all said and done things in the past that we would love to take back? But you got to let go and let God. Because have y'all seen, he talks about things Trump has said and done or whatever, but nobody has showed me anything from from really evidence standpoint that anything Trump has done is racist. Actually, on the contrary, what are these people talking about? Have y'all seen Joe Biden's clips in the past 50 years, half a century of Joe Biden saying off the wall, actually racist things. Trump said what he was going to do. He executed on it. And then people still hated him for it. They still called him racist. And he was, he was looking out for everybody. He had everybody's pockets and bank accounts a whole lot more full and refreshed than what we got going on now with inflation and, and Joe Biden cutting off pipelines and, and all the nonsense y'all know Joe has done. The list goes on and on. And don't even talk about Kamala because, you know, she, come on now, y'all. That's a law that allows prisoners who believe they have unfairly long sentences to have their sentences reviewed. And since President Trump signed that act, 1,000 people have benefited. 90% have been black men. They've had their sentences reduced an average of almost 70 months. But Joe Biden was trying to put them back in chains. They're going to put you all back in chains. Mr. President, thank you so much. It's almost hard for me to speak about this without being emotional. In the process of this, this has brought together friendships that I'll cherish for the rest of my life. I'm now texting buddies with Van Jones. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of Van White Lash Jones. Oh, How boy. significant do you think this is? There's a Christmas Purdue. miracle underway oh, where for the first time in a generation, Republicans and Democrats mm -hmm. are arm in arm tonight saying, we are sending Mr. too many people to prison. Mr. They're coming out bitter and not better. We want to make a tremendous difference. I want to mm -hmm. say uh, Hakeem Jeffries uh, on the left, Jared Kushner and Donald Trump on the right have brought together a coalition like I've never seen. And what about Trump's... Wait a second. It's, 
That's Van Jones on, on controversial or commie news network, whatever you want to refer to CNN as actually fake news, as Donald Trump would say. But it's refreshing to hear when people actually have good things to say about Big 45. It's, it's, it's a beautiful thing or the great white hope, as uh, JLP would say, Jesse Lee Peterson. Amazing. Music Modernization Act, something that, again, President Obama didn't even do. President Donald Trump today moved Got the music in industry into the 21st century. He signed the Music Modernization Act, legalizing the landmark copyright reform for songwriters. The goal is to ensure songwriters receive pay for the products that they produce when you're listening to them on streaming services. Sounds racist. <laughs> is this a great day for songwriters? It is. And, and artists. And artists. artists, okay. Yeah, yeah. Don't give it up to artists, artists. okay. <laughs> don't, don't. So it's a great thing what Trump is doing today, the president. It is, it is, it okay. is. And you know what? I told everybody, please, whatever your opinion or your decision, please, let's keep it signed. Let him sign it, please. Yeah, look, today, today, don't mess him up, please. <laughs> he said, quiet it down now. Just let him get through this, signing this bill before you critique and criticize Don. Just let him get through this. And then there is President Trump's support for school choice. The time has come to pass no school crazy choice Nancy back there. <laughs> for Americans' children. But now look at what they're doing to schools that Biden is trying to allow. When Big Don was in there, nobody was allowing that nonsense. Nobody was allowing that that demonic, Satan-filled evil to be spewed to these kids. That They just need to be learning arithmetic and, and English, all the regular things that kids should be informed about that don't have to do with sex or changing genders because you can't do it. None of that stuff should be taught in schools, even portrayed in schools whatsoever. It's inappropriate. It's perversive. It's just pervasive, perversive, either one. <laughs> It just is wrong. And I love how Donald Trump was blunt to the point. He said what was on his mind that most of us agreed with. And we were thinking anyways, we were just too scared to say it. And he cut off all the political nonsense. He just came through for the people. So on the campaign trail, Trump didn't talk racist, much about guess, policy, but he did, when he did, he talked about racist. school choice. And Betsy DeVos is a longtime school choice advocate. Well, I believe that the family, that parents are the primary educator for their child or their children. And, uh, and we have, in, to a large extent, uh, removed a lot of that ability to direct and control by forcing way too many families to uh, assign schools based on where they live. Now, choice in education is something that blacks and browns want. Guess who doesn't want it? White Dems, you know, who would never put their own kids in an urban school in a million. You got the big three up there. Not talking about the basketball league founded by Ice Cube or, or LeBron, D. Wade, and Chris Bosh in the prime. Big three of crazies, of complete Looney Tunes. You got Elizabeth Warren, uh, Jim Crow, Joe Biden, and Bernie Sanders, the cult leader of all cult leaders that wants to give you student loans completely free, he wants to, which it comes out of our tax dollars, which people don't, they, I still don't understand how they don't comprehend that. But Now, the proposal that I brought forth on education ends all private charter schools in this country. If I'm president, Betsy DeVos's whole notion from charter schools to this are gone. We're going we to have the same choice what? that you make for your kids because I read that your children went to private schools. No, aren't you, aren't you public schools. But we, we, even if it was public school, it probably was the best public school. I can't pack up and say I'm leaving Hyde Park and going to Germantown. That's really? our suburban area. Because I can't afford it. Mm -hmm. My daughter can't afford it. I understand. So we you don't want to make what Elizabeth. we got Stop great, whether it's charter or tradition. Lies. And really, That's public schools are charter in yeah. where I come from. And we make parents know that they charter schools are public schools mm -hmm. too. So let me just say, I appreciate nothing more than how much you care about your children. And Pandering. Your children. That's what she's doing right now. That's what all the Democrats do. They pander. One. If I don't have the pieces right, then I'll go back and read. Go back and read it, I'll please. And, read it and I promise you, I the promise next time you see me, if it's reading the way it's going to benefit well, our children. These Dems, man, they're, they're wolves in sheep's clothing. They're so deceitful and evil, and they act like they care, but they don't. They say all these things, but when it, it comes down time to 
go to business and time to sound, uh, sign these legislations into to law and make them effective. They don't do it. They they backpedal on all the things they said they were going to do, or they, they told you straight up front and you just didn't believe what they were saying. You just, for whatever reason, people's eyes were closed and they didn't see what was blatantly in front of them. And then they wonder why the world is chaos. They wonder why we got all this uh, racial tension and division and, and people are going broke and they can't afford uh, baby formula, get, quench their little sphincter at the pump every time you go to just fill up the gas. I want some mean tweets back. I want, if that's all it is, it's some mean tweets, some, some feelings being hurt. I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it all day long. As a Christian man, I, I would love God and love my neighbor. And if all we got to deal with is some mean tweets, people need to thicken up that skin because I haven't found, I, I, I've been searching it and looking, but I still haven't figured out what Donald Trump has done that was racist. I ask all these liberal people and no one could tell me nothing, nothing at all. There's hundred hundreds of hours easily of people calling him racist online, but where? Where look at Joe Biden. It's it's all out there in the, in the front and right in the open. But where's where's Donald's moments at? You think there'd be a ton of memes of him saying some off the wall crazy nonsense? But I promise, go back and read. It. I'll be glad. Sure we'll just it read it. That's okay. But it turns out that Senator Warren had a son People got in to dig deeper school from the fifth grade on. But you care about people that are just regular, regular, everyday folks. Come on now. No, you don't. Evil, lying. But let's move on. What about illegal immigration? And what does that have to do with blacks? Now we must implement an immigration system that will allow our citizens to prosper for generations to come. Mm. Today we are presenting a clear contrast Democrats are proposing open borders, lower wages, and frankly, lawless chaos. We are proposing an immigration plan that puts the jobs, wages, and safety of American workers first. Take care of home base. Well, there's nothing racist about locking down the borders. You lock your doors every single night because you don't want anybody that's not wanted to come in and take what you've earned. Take what your, your family loves and all the things that you care about. Go through the necessary steps and precautions that are in place legally to become a citizen of the United States. If it was so bad, if everybody was so evil and, and diabolical and everybody's trying to take you down based on how you look, then why is everybody still trying to come here? And if you got a problem with it, rotate, leave, exit stage left because... I'm for America, home of the free because of the brave. I, I acknowledge all the freedoms and luxuries that, that we have, that we take for granted time and time again. But people keep coming here and they want it. We can't allow that to happen. We can't just say, oh, yeah, come on in. Come on. No, I, I wouldn't do that at my house. You wouldn't do that at your house. There's I just don't make no sense, man. Common sense is not it's not easy to find anymore. It's, it's very rare to see. So if you have it, hold on to it tight. Cuddle that thing real close because it's real Real rare of a trait to have these days. Peter Kersenow is a friend I've known some 40 years. He's a longtime member of the U.S. Civil Rights Commission. Professor Briggs testified before the Civil Rights Commission. We had a whole host of people testifying before the Civil Rights Commission. The one cohort, the one demographic in the United States of America most harmed, most palpably harmed by illegal immigration are black Americans and Politicians, open borders politicians know this. They know this because there have been numerous hearings before Congress on this. I've testified in a number of these hearings. George Borjas has testified in a number of these hearings. Uh, Stephen Camerata has testified, and we've presented all of this evidence, all of this data, that the pernicious effect of illegal immigration of open borders has had on black Americans in terms of uh, employment. Nearly one million fewer blacks work today because of the competition from illegal immigration than otherwise would be the case if we had a secure border. And it also depresses wage rates by a tune of $1,800 a year. George Borjas estimates that the depressive effects of illegal immigration on wages is anywhere from $99 billion to $118 billion annually, cumulatively, but it has the most significant effect on the black community. And did I mention Trump's expansion of so-called enterprise zones that will benefit the inner city? It's a big day. Yes, sir. Thank you. In a few moments, I will sign an executive order launching a new White House opportunity. This is a very big thing that Tim and I and everybody have been working on for a long time. And Revitalization Council. This council will coordinate efforts across the entire federal government to deliver jobs, investment, and growth to the communities that need it the most. He puts in, puts in, puts in. 
while the other side just takes, 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 they take your freedoms, they take life, they take your everything away. All Donald wants is to allow, he's pro-gun. He wants you to have the right to protect yourself, to keep that Second Amendment standing strong. So if the government or any tyrannical evil person tries to come in and take what you got, you have a way of defending your freedoms and your family. What's wrong with that? He's pro-life. All life was created by God, formed in the womb, created in his image and his likeness. Honor that. Cherish that. The left doesn't, though. A lot of people on the left. I know some people do. And it, it's, just, it's so wrong. He's pro border control because when people illegal people come in, I'm not going to call them aliens. But when they come in, I understand you, you love your neighbor. We got neighbors that are a whole lot closer right next door to us in our own country in America. Why are we worried about taking care of everybody else? Why are we taking care of people in Ukraine when we aren't taking care of home base? Locking that down, if, if you don't, people, like they just said, people come in, they take your wages, the stuff that you work hard for, the stuff that you need to, you know, set up the lifestyle that you say you want to have for your, your, your kids and your grandparents or whatever it may be. Black, white, doesn't matter. If people are just coming over here, taking your jobs, taking your comforts and luxuries, then are, are we all racist then for wanting not that not to happen? If you lock your door at night, are you racist for not wanting and welcoming people, just strangers to come in here? I guess I don't know what's going on in the world. I, I see it's, it's madness, but it just doesn't add up to me. And it doesn't make sense how people don't understand this, how people on the left just constantly just spinning their wheels, running the rat race, getting brainwashed time and time again. Wake up. Pardoning of Jack Johnson, the first black heavyweight champion who was busted for a crime involving the transportation of a woman across state lines for purposes of sex. It was a BS charge just designed to nail him and President Trump once again, did something Obama did not do, and that is to pardon Jack Johnson. Mm. A great grandmother gets a second chance at freedom after President Trump commutes her life sentence. Alice Marie Johnson served 21 years for a nonviolent first time drug charge, but a serious charge of drug trafficking and money laundering. Her story caught the eye of Kim Kardashian West, who made a personal plea for the release to President Trump last week. Johnson shared an emotional reunion with her family after walking out of an Alabama prison yesterday. They are the folks who had been lobbying uh, for this. They got Deontay Wilder back there. They got Sylvester Stallone. Pardon uh, for, for years now. Johnson was the first African-American he heavyweight champ. Come on now. And in what was seen by many as a racial injustice, Johnson was convicted of a crime back in 1913. That crime was transporting a a white woman across state lines. Uh, he died in 1946. Senator John McCain, former Senate Majority Leader uh, Harry Reid had also been pushing Johnson's case for years. But again, President Trump has uh, posthumously uh, pardoned Jack Johnson. And did I mention that Trump is upspending on historically black colleges and universities by 14%? Education has the power to uplift it has the power to transform, and perhaps most important, education has the power to create greater equality and justice in our lives. That's why today I'm thrilled to be signing an executive order to recognize the importance of historically black college and universities. Very important. They have played such an important role in achieving progress for African Americans and in our nation's march for justice. HBCUs have been really pillars of the African-American community for more than 150 years. Amazing job. And a grand and enduring symbol of America at its absolute best. And I congratulate you all to say that. Finally, a word or two about President Trump's support for law enforcement. Now, what does it have to do with black and brown people living in the inner city? Well, consider the Ferguson effect. That is what happens when officers are falsely accused of racism, as happened after Ferguson. Cops pulled back and crime went up. And guess who got disproportionately hurt by that crime? Black and brown people. Well, the Ferguson effect is the twin phenomenon of officers backing off hmm. of proactive policing and the resulting increase in crime. Last year, we had the largest one year increase in homicide in nearly a half century. Yeah, take away the the law enforcement and the people keeping uh, evil at bay. Take take that away. Oh, because the criminals gonna see that and they gonna say, oh, we're, we're gonna start acting right now. We we see the cops have been taken out because they were so they were so against us. They were just out to get us because our skin tone, what we look like, where we come from, how we speak, whatever you know 
insert, insert this, this, that, and the third, take them away. Oh, and then the criminals, they're going to slow down. They're going to they're gonna put a halt to it. They're going to they're gonna stop stealing and, and killing and doing all the, the Satan filled things that because they don't know the Lord because they didn't they weren't raised with a father in the home. That's that's one of the biggest issues out there. Fatherless homes that nobody's getting spanked. Nobody's getting disciplined and, and knowing how to come up in the world and have proper moral and respectable values. But the criminals, they just going they going to ease up because law enforcement is easy. What? Huh? What? That don't make any sort of sense. Donald didn't have to do any of this stuff. He didn't have to help HBCUs. He didn't have to pardon any of these these African-American people. He didn't have to pardon any of them. He did that for an, for their image. So, I mean, it probably it helps his image as well. Let's be honest. But he didn't have to do that. What other president has done the things that Donald has done for the black community, for the white community, for the Hispanic community? What has any other president in ever who had taken oath and, and been inducted into that office? What have they done that amounts to what Donald Trump did in one term? One single term. Look at what Obama did in two terms, how how he just deteriorated the country. Race relations, pin and size, not not a godly man. And come on now. It's just it's right there in front of us. It's literally right there in front of us. And Larry Elder does such a great job in making facts entertaining. I always enjoy his videos. But at what point are people going to dig a little deeper, start thinking for themselves? Because right now it's it's vital. It's vital in the United States of America to know what's really going on, to have accurate facts and not just all this rhetoric, not all these media headlines that paint Donald Trump and, and Republicans and Christians as, as bad people because they stick to the foundation of godly values because we value life, because we value freedom. That makes us evil. That makes us racist. Come on now, man. The vast majority of the victims of that homicide increase have been black. The reason for this crime increase, I believe, is that officers are living today under a false and dangerous narrative that says that they are shot through with systemic racism, that we're living through an epidemic of racially biased police shootings, and that the type of proactive policing Lies, that I man. think is responsible for a 20-year crime decline that this nation has enjoyed uh, is under attack as racially oppressive. Bottom line, whether you're talking about the First Step Act, the Music Modernization Act, the tremendous economy that's benefiting black people, the fact that Donald Trump is doing something about illegal immigration, the fact that Donald Trump supports school choice, this man has got to be the worst racist ever, <laughs> right? <laughs> I think white people that like black people, y'all should get some sort of wristband, a hand snap, or something. <laughs> I'm, I'm dead serious. Something you can show in a dark alley to keep you from getting robbed. <laughs> you know, you might not think that's a good idea, but you wish you had a wristband. You leave tonight and you're in that dark alley. Give me your money, white boy. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, uh, that's messed up, but it's for real. Let her through. She got the wristband. Let her through, Chucky. So bring it to the front. Where's Donald Trump's wristband? I'm Larry Elder, and this has been the Larry Elder Show. I'll see you next time. Spot on. He always delivers with the most accurate facts that you could ask for. He's he's a contemporary hero in this day and age when we need voices like this. And he's been called an Uncle Tom, which people don't understand the story from Uncle Tom's cabin. They don't understand that that's actually a compliment when you dig a little deeper. Again, people base level, surface level thinking and not actually logical thinking for themselves, just going off of what they've been spoon fed time and time again. And if Donald Trump is racist, then hey, I'm quarter black, really doesn't matter at the end of the day, West African to be exact, if you wanna be specific in my comment section. It really doesn't matter. I guess I'm racist for having logical thinking and, and liking people of all colors, wanting all people to succeed if they have good more values, they're respectful, they're loving, they're caring. They just want to work hard and take care of their people and be free. You know what I'm saying? We live in America, home of the free because of the brave. Don't take it for granted. People have fought and died of all colors for our freedoms. So I'm not allowing anybody to come in here without having to complain about it, without speaking out against it. That ain't right. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it's just not right. Y'all let me know what you think down below. Let's keep this conversation rolling. Remember, we can have a difference in opinion. You can think I'm off the wall. I may be wrong. I'm, again, I'm human just like you. One race, human race. That's what I believe. So I could be incorrect all day long. I want to hear your thoughts and opinions down below. Uh, we can still respect each other for having a difference in those. Like, subscribe, hit that notification 
notification bell so you can stay up to date on all future videos. Share this video whether you agree or disagree with my take on it. At least allow other people to think for themselves. Give them that opportunity to make up their own mind about this content right here. And if you want to support the channel, you can always buy me a coffee. Tap the thanks button. You can get a shirt or two from my wife's Etsy store or some Gibby gear merch off of, of my Teespring. Uh, all those links are in the description section always. So if you ever are curious what shirt I'm wearing or what it may be that I use to make these videos possible, always link down below. Um, either way, we appreciate the support, whether you do or don't dive into those links at all. Uh, I just appreciate you watching me on your screen or whatever we've developed in this time since I've been here in front of you. I'm grateful to have you. So until next time, I love y'all. I'll be praying for you. Godspeed. I'm gone.